This video is proudly sponsored by Gamersgate. Download games anytime, anywhere. Visit Gamersgate.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Elder Geeks Game Club. This is episode number 43, Cine Mora. My name is Steve Wilkinson, and joining me, as always, is Phil Summers. Phil, how are you doing tonight? I am fantastic tonight. How about yourself? Doing fantastic as well. Wow. Nice, talk nice talking to you again. It's been a while. <laughs> nice talking to you, too. <laughs> and in the background, trying his hardest not to giggle, is the editor and owner of EldergeekCom, Randy Asenchak. Randy, I how are you doing? I did. You made it. I made it. I didn't giggle. <laughs> I, I was trying. I was trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you, like so. Seriously, don't... every every week you guys are like, "How are you?" I I am well. How are you? <laughs> it's very. It's a long day. You know, we're doing this nine thirty. Talking about sweaty balls. You know. Uh, uh, you know. We do sometimes. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Well, anyway. I'm and, doing well. And, it's been it's been a nice hectic week, and I'm and I'm glad to be back on the show. Well, it's good to have you back. I mean Thanks. that. Thanks. <laughs> and Thank we have you. a special guest with us again. Well, not again, but again, we have a very special guest, and for the first time, we have Lyat joining us. Lyat, you guys have absolutely no idea how hard I'm trying not to crack up right now. <laughs> You're allowed to crack up. You can. Wish. You can. You can be like giggling and gyrating. We don't have a camera on for you, so. Oh, we yeah. are. We are shooting for the most awkward intro award during that. Whenever they do those podcast awards uh, every year, so that's that's kind of. <laughs> you know, uh, I think we're. You I think, win that every year. Uh, I think we might edge it out this year. And unfortunately, I'm the scrub without joining it. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm the scrub without a camera, so <laughs> that's okay. So, uh, Lyat, why don't you tell us a little bit about your uh, your channel and everything, and uh, for the the people at home. All right. Well, I'm uh, I'm Lyat from the Cyan Firefly. We are basically a really small gaming channel. We're partnered with RPM, and uh, we basically do a lot of first impression stuff. A lot of uh, well, we have one Let's Play running, which is of XCOM, and that's pretty much about it. We do occasionally do review work uh, with our TLDR series, but there really isn't much else to say. <laughs> cool. And as always, if you guys click on uh, Cyan's head or Cyan's logo, you'll go right to his YouTube channel. And Phil, if you click on his head above mine, uh, you'll go to shamoozle.com as well, where you get to watch some cartoons. Steve, you and I still are dead. We're dead links. <laughs> well, we should. Click... Uh, can we go to eldergeek.com or? Something? If you click on the Game Club logo, <laughs> you will go to eldergeek.com. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you should do that. So many calls uh, to action. <laughs> I know. Click them all. All the things. <laughs> we're hitting. We're hitting these people with an awful lot right out of the gate here. I think we we might want to scale it back. Just and, preparing uh, for people... to. People who might be joining us for the first time, what we do on the Game Club is we'll pick a game, we play it for a couple weeks, get together here, and we. Record the kind of informal chat about the game in a easy to swallow podcast form, uh, and this time around we played the uh, 2.5D shooter shmup Cinemora for the Xbox 360, PS3, Vita, and PC. Sign more. Sign sign more. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you spell sign in in like mathematics, right? S I N E. So. Like a sine wave. Yeah. Yeah. Sine. Sine more. Yeah, right. I've actually been calling it sine mora. Yeah, I, that's what I was always saying as well. I've been mispronouncing everything lately, so I don't. I, I did. Yeah. Up. You I looked did it up. It. Now, what what is it again? What's the correct way to say it again? One more time. Sine mora. All right, and we looked up a definition of that as well too, right? Latin, and it means without delay. Nifty. So, Phil, why don't you give us a little, uh, a little background information? A little history. Yeah, a little history. And speaking of saying things wrong, I'm probably going to say a bunch of names wrong in here, too. So, Yeah, yeah this one's with a little Deal with it. Here come, here come my glasses, man. Deal with it. All right. So, Cine Mura. It's a side-scrolling 2D shooter developed by Digital Reality. They're a Hungarian developer. They're known for something I, I don't actually know. Imperium Galactica. You guys know that? Familiar with that? I've never played that one before. 
I, think, I hear it's like a series. Yeah, I, I don't know. And Grasshopper Manufacturer, which is the great Suda 51's company responsible for No More Heroes, Lollipop Chainsaw, a whole bunch of, whole bunch of good stuff, uh, depending on your point of view. Uh, <laughs> A whole bunch of Bill have, stuff, really. A whole <laughs> lot of polarizing stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a whole lot. Well, <laughs> Shining Soul, part of the Shining series. Yeah, Grasshopper? Yeah. Oh, I don't think I knew that one. No. Oh. Um, Look that up. You know what I always wanted to play from Grasshopper, which I never did, was uh, the Shadows of the Dam. You guys ever play that? I did. And, uh, did you if, like it? I, what I played was okay. I mean... They over they overdid it a bit on the the uh, multiple entendre jokes. It's like we get yeah, it. He yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I know, but I find that hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I really there was a point where I was supposed to do a video review for it, and uh, the game the game kept freezing on the same boss for me, and I couldn't. Uh, if I can't beat the game, I can't review it. So, mm. yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I... So I... the game. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, I hate it when crap like that happens. Yeah, that, I mean, that's it. Just kept happening over and over and over again. I, if I remember correctly, it was like some kind of minotaur dude that I was fighting, and literally just kept freezing in the exact same spot. But uh, yeah. oh well, not much you can do. It's mm. a bummer. All right, so it was a timed exclusive for the Xbox 360 that came out in March of last year. So the game is about a year old. It was like the tail end of March. I didn't write the exact date down here, but eventually came to PC and, as Steve mentioned, PlayStation platforms in November. <laughs> So, Grasshopper, did someone just like fall down a thing of stairs or something there? I heard a, a scream. It wasn't my house. <laughs> it, w it sounds like something that would happen in my house, but it was not my house. Uh, or my house. <laughs> uh, so, Grasshopper, they were responsible for the art direction and the sound design. And I guess they kind of like handed these ideas off to digital reality. And they handled the coding, all the 3D assets and modeling and the story and the game design. Um, the character designs were originally human. But it was kind of decided that the game wasn't crazy enough, so they changed them into the uh, anthropomorphic characters that uh, inha surprisingly inhabited the game. I was not expecting uh, like a rabbit man to show up after the story that they had presented me in the beginning. <coughs> Star Fox <laughs> ripoff. <coughs> yeah, you know that's the best way to describe the, uh, the 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 setting in the story is that it's like if Star Fox tried to be deep. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually had that exact <laughs> thought. I was like, this is Star Fox trying to be deep, but like 2D, yeah. of course. Right. So, um, the bosses were designed by, I'm going to kill this name, Ma Mahiro Maeda. Uh, he is known for his work on uh, the Animatrix and uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Evangelion. How do you say that? Evangelion? Evangelion? Evangelion. I've heard it pronounced so many ways. Evangelion? Ava. How about just Ava? That's what I always <laughs> Neon call. Genesis E. Yeah, <laughs> and the music was done by uh, Kira Yamoka, which I probably said that wrong as well. But I love this guy's work, even though I can't say his name properly. Uh, he is known for Silent Hill, Contra Sh Shattered Soldier, uh, Lollipop Chainsaw. He was a long time uh, Konami guy. He was there, I think, from the early '90s, like '93, and then uh, he left. Probably like around when Grasshopper started, when Grasshopper formed, and he's like Grasshopper's music and sound dude um the game is critically acclaimed with an 84 percent on game rankings and an 83 on metacritic which is pretty good i'd say for the game of, of its type of its kind in this yeah. day and age so our thoughts on cine mura so that's a heavy hitting uh heavy hitting development team there yeah yeah well randy do you want to give us kind of your uh your oh, yeah. summary of the the gameplay uh to play this game, not even going to try to pronounce the name again properly. Um, to play the game, it's it's your standard bullet hell side scrolling shoot 'em up, um, where you you know you you get power ups based on uh, picking up uh, you know picking up the power ups if you kill chains of enemies. The uh, the catch to this is there's no health bar. Instead, there's a time bar, and every time you get hit, the time goes down. And is that can... how that works? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dude. I had no idea. I was going to be one of the. I was going to be one of the points I brought up. <laughs> Did right, you hit. play the game? <laughs> if, if you get I hit, beat it. I completed the game. I had no idea. I had no idea. Dude, that's how good. it was yeah. working. I'm I'm glad you beat it. But uh, if you get hit, the time goes down. There's there's no health bar. If you get hit, the time goes down. Also, if you get hit, you lose your power ups, but they spread out in the environment, and you can go and pick them up again if you need to. Um, 
but you can also pick up time extenders as well. So in a sense, it's it's almost like a it's almost like a pole position racing game. Well, at every the same time, time you shoot something, your time goes up, right? Yeah, there, every time you kill something, right? Everything yes. kills. Something. But there are also time you know speed them up dealies. Right. Um, but that's it. That's that's really all there is to it. Occasionally, the controls will flip flop as the you know plane goes from one side to the other. But but otherwise, it's pretty much pretty much it. If you played a side scrolling shoot 'em up, you know how to play this game. Yeah. yeah. It's f- I can't believe I didn't know the time. That was driving me nuts. Because there were times <laughs> where like I was getting hit a million times and I wasn't dying, and and then there were other times where I would get hit once and I'd die. And I'm like, what is going on here? I never even yeah, yeah. realized it was the time. It was the time yeah. thing. Yep. So, yeah, I'm surprised you actually didn't just like randomly explode at some point because you ran out of time. You know what? That dude, <laughs> I am so glad you I am so glad you brought that up. Wow. But didn't right. when when that happened, didn't you read the thing that came up on the screen said your time is up? <laughs> yeah, but your time is up is kind of vague. You well, that never mean, happened like, to me. I guess that never, I... <laughs> that never happened to me until I guess we're getting into the game now. Um, yeah. arcade mode. I tried after I completed the game. Okay. And on arcade mode, you can choose. You, when you play the story mode, you're a, you have an ability which is you slow down time, and you know that way you can navigate through the bullets. When you play arcade mode, you can select three one of three things. I didn't know, I didn't pick the third. Oh, I did pick the third one. It's a, a shield that deflects bullets, and then the other one is it rewinds time, like mm-hmm. a like a Prince of Persia thing. So, on the one ball on the first boss. I was just exploding, and I was rewinding time, and I would come back and just explode. Had <laughs> it was. I was just like, this fucking game sucks. So I'm so glad <laughs> that I now know this, and I know the game doesn't I suck. The ga- <laughs> yeah, the, the frickin' Sentinel thing that obviously came from the Matrix. Right. Mm-hmm. Which makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I, I guess I'll just, I guess I'll keep going here, um, since I was already blabbing. And, and anyone, you know, feel free to, to jump in. I was kind of looking forward to playing this game for a while. I got it on a Steam sale during the Christmas sale. I think, actually, no, I got it through uh, Green Man Gaming, and I activated it through Steam. But whatever. Um, you got it cheap is what, what you're saying. Yes, yes. I got it for like $2. And I never played it until we started playing it for Game Club. And um, I think it's good, but I, I certainly don't love it. Um, I'm trying to think of where to start here. The story, um, I'm not normally much of a story guy. Uh, especially but, in your in your oh. shooters, right? Yeah, and, yeah. I feel like it really dragged the pacing down because there's like lots of just lots of chatter, and you didn't really know what was going on, and I didn't really, and I just just like this is this is kind of dumb. Like I, there was <laughs> so, there were I'm, I feel the exact same way. There were points where I was like, oh, they're talking again. Fast forward, and I'd hold yeah. down the left bumper to make it go. It's like I really don't care. I'm playing a side-scrolling shooter. There, th- this is supposed to be as I don't want to I don't want to like fault them for trying to add another dimension to to what is typically a one-dimensional type game but when i'm going to play a shooter i just want to play a shooter you know yeah. i i, I want to go play geometry wars or i want to play 1943 and just shoot stuff until it blows up right yeah I, I i definitely was not feeling this and i had no idea apparently it's about time travel i don't know like mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You got, you got me, man. I don't know. Well, the pre- the premise is is the um the one race of people the I guess they're the rabbit people they were like okay. wiped out. Um, the flippies, slippies. I get, Who's sure. the rabbit in, in Star Fox? I can't remember. Uh, Slippy. Flippy. I don't know. But anyway, the, the the story idea was is that there was this great war and this race was it was basically like genocide and they were wiped out but they have the ability to travel back in time so they just keep going back and then. Um, that's how they like. Serve, that's how they don't really get wiped out as they go back in time and just keep going. So, if you get uh, and, wiped uh, out, how do you go back in time to unwipe yourself? Well, they don't all get wiped out, but so most they mostly of them get, wiped get wiped out. out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, and, and this the is just stuff I read and pieced together. I'm sorry. What did you say? The the in case or whatever yeah. that. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the entire so the, game's in what Finnish? Hungarian, Hungarian, I believe. Hungarian. Hungarian. Yeah. Yeah, Which the, I thought was kind of cool, actually. Yep. Yeah, the, de- the developers said they wanted it to have kind of a alien, otherworldly feel, so they decided just to have it all be in native Hungarian. Because <laughs> nobody... <laughs> so, the, so the language they speak in is alien and otherworldly. Well, it's just not a very common... It's not It's not a common... Le- like, like you're used to playing games that are in, like, Japanese or, right. like, you know... Uh, but So it sounded just a... 
<laughs> Sport it almost, it just had a different sound to it, you know? It, it did. It guys, did. nobody speaks this. I will admit, I will admit, before I found out that it was in Hungarian, for a moment I thought, is this a made-up gibberish language? Like, I was like, this sounds really good for a gibberish language. There's actual, like, mm. you know... I thought it, I thought it was Russian until I, I looked it, it up, and, I and then... Russian as well. Yeah, I thought it was either German or uh, Swedish or Finnish, one of the... One of those areas. One, one of the issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. but so, yeah, the story's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of throwaway. Right. It's whatever. And then at the same time, I thought that the story mode was like, I mean, I played it on normal. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm great at these kind of games. I really like shooters like this, uh, but I'm not that good at them. And I blew through this. Like, I didn't die until maybe like the fourth stage or something some boss like i finally died and i think i died because it did like a one of these just like one hit moves where it just wiped me out uh, like I, you know i you didn't see it coming one of those things like yeah you're gonna hit the first time it happens uh, uh for, fourth fourth stage the train it was um you're in like a desert I think was it the uh, wrecking ball daily thing it was around that point. Yeah. It was like a boss yeah. around there. Yeah. Um, so I cruised through it. I never got like a game over or anything like that. And what I was thinking was, so your big ability is you can turn back or you can slow time. And I never thought that it was you. I always, to me, it always felt like it was a crutch to use that. I never felt like it was an important part of the game to be like, okay, now I have to use this. It was just kind of like, oh, uh, I think I might die here. I'm just going to slow it up for a second. I never felt like it... I just like I just felt like it was like a crutch, almost like a cheat. Like, in an old NES game, like, you're activating the slowdown, just, you know, like when the games used to come to a crawl. I know what you mean. Um, and, and I think it's because the game is kind of slow-paced to begin with. Like, the bullets are... They're, they are a little bit on the slow side. I thought, and, and this could actually be the case from the way I played it, so once in a while, fraps will have an effect on video games, especially side-scrolling shooters, where it will slow it down. Mm -hmm. And I thought that fraps was having an effect on the game, and I don't think it—I don't think it was. I kept hitting record and stop record and re-record to see if the bullets would speed up at all, and they really weren't. Well, Randy, it is actually a frame-locked game, so whenever I was getting uh, frame drops, the game itself was slowing down. I did notice that was quite it? a bit. Yeah. Even if you were capping at like 50 frames a second or something like that. Uh, I actually had it capped at 30, and it was still dropping. That's crazy. Well, what can I say? I, I still felt like it was it was a like the bullets were slow enough for me to just dodge them normally without. Yeah. And I, and I suck at shooters. Right. So, so then I, I kind of had that problem with that whole just mechanic, and then after that I said I thought okay well let me try arcade mode and maybe like that'll be harder and that'll make this mechanic make sense you know maybe but then our cable was like so hard like i couldn't even <laughs> defeat the first boss like it, i mean ridiculously hard like i just felt like there was never the right difficulty you know it was just like either the game was a breeze and you just beat it or it was just you it whooped your ass and you know you didn't even really want to touch it yeah. that was well, just kind of how i felt yeah. Did you play story mode at the higher difficulties? Because story mode is easier than arcade mode, even at its highest difficulty. Really? Wow. Yeah, like arcade mode is for the serious, serious, I want to play shooter, bullet hell craziness. Okay. Yeah, and maybe I should have tried, maybe I should have tried story on, on hard mode. Maybe you're right. I, did, mm. I didn't do that. Yeah, um, I, didn't, I didn't know that either. You would think that story and arcade would be the same difficulty level. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, the way it, well the way it works too is it. If correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, as you shoot and as you do better, it gets harder, right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, like it looks like like a rank, like your rank goes up as you take down, as you dodge and take down ships, right? And then yeah. it, and then they increase the amount of bullets that they're throwing at you and that kind of thing. Yeah, there was some of that, and not to mention, you know, you got to keep your power-ups. You also got a little bit more effective as well. Right. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I guess I should have tried to, like, you know, made my thoughts a little more clear here. But 
you know, I thought I think it's a cool game. I don't think it's like amazing or anything like that. But um certainly has some awesome like some of the like the bosses always looked awesome. They're always badass. There's these big awesome machines filled up the whole screen, all turning around and spinning and new parts or you know, all this shit's just flying off them and stuff. There that stuff's all cool. I thought but, uh, I thought all the environmental stuff was all, I thought the environments looked great. I thought the ships looked really cool. Yeah. I would yeah. I would love to play a full three D version of that with those with you know, propeller type steampunkish planes all fighting each other with lasers yeah. and crap. That that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, the, the art and the graphics and everything were all, are just awesome. I, I think yeah. artistically, uh, uh, the sounds were pretty good. I loved the music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was listening to the music before we started recording, actually, because actually, when you're playing it, um, I felt like you, I really didn't hear the music as much because there's just so many huge explosions, like just you know. Or, screen rumbling explosions that uh, you couldn't really hear the music that good so i was listening to it and yeah it's got a pretty cool pretty decent soundtrack um speaking of the shaking that was another that was one thing that kind of bothered me um every time you destroy a ship the screen shakes but it shakes like sh- so much that sometimes when the bullets are really flying you're just getting hit because you can't you kind of can't keep up you know what i mean mm. but you know th- th- that's I guess that's my say on it. Hmm. The final boss left me unable to dodge anything. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was just kind of, I got lucky and I won. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, I, uh, what about you? you uh, you've been quiet, bud. You yeah, well, it, right? you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with you guys on a lot of your points. Yeah. Um, Good. Go, go. I, uh, yeah, tell us know. we are full of shit. No, no, no. Well, come on. I'm, you know, I'm not. Like that. <laughs> it's okay. Tell me. Fucking up. idiots. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, really like. So you really like. I really enjoyed the game a lot. Yeah. It's I mean, awesome. I finished. I finished it. So if that's one thing for you there that, to say. Now look, I'm not really skilled at shmup games at all. In fact, I'm borderline not good at them. Um, you beat Jamestown. I did beat Jamestown. Yeah, I felt pretty good. Oh, about that. don't get me started on Jamestown. You didn't like Jamestown? I can't beat that freaking game. No. <laughs> but um, my point being is I found the difficulty on normal in story mode to be challenging enough that I, I didn't feel like I breezed through the game. And I no. did die. And I did actually get a game over. And I had to go back and reselect the stage I was on. and Which I... That mechanic is ridiculous anyway. But I mean, the whole credit thing. And, you know, you have... Mm. I, I mean, I get it, but at this like, point... All right, so what? You get a game over, and you just basically start where you started from? You, you have to... You rest- just have to go select it? You start that stage over, yeah, from the main yeah. menu. Yeah, basically. All right. and, and I don't know if there's some other, like, point penalty in that you don't carry over points or whatever, but I'm who the hell cares about any of that anyway, unless you're, like... like Lyra, you're, If yeah. you're the guy who wants to play the arcade mode who's insane, then, then yeah, right. then, then I guess... Well, all the stages were, like, two-parters... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you died on, like, the second part, you would have to do the first part all over again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, the two different timelines, you'd have to do the first timeline over again. And it, it, it did get really annoying. I died to that wrecking ball guy a lot, so I yeah. ended up having yeah. to deal with that. Um, but, yeah, so I, I, I felt like it was enough of a challenge that I didn't feel like I was breezing through it, but it also wasn't so frustrating that I was just like, I'm done with this game, you know, and walk away from it. Uh, which I'm prone to do at times. <laughs> um, but, Understand. yeah, I mean, as far as the story goes, yeah, I I, th- I think it's cool that they tried to do something a little deeper. Oh, than, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. It didn't, like, you know, I was kind of interested in some of it, but not others, but it did. you were able to just hit the LB button and just skip all that shit anyway. So, like, when it was getting too chatty for me, I would just hit that and just be like, all right, I'm just going to, I'm ready to play the game now. So I would just fast forward to all that stuff, which I thought was nice that they put that in there. It's not like they forced you to sit there and listen to all that shit. Right. Um, right. Yeah, I did start, I did start, uh, start fast forwarding it. Like, yeah, and, yeah and, I, and, I, and I didn't get it. So from that point of view, I kind of turned my brain off, and I just didn't really get a whole lot out of the story. A couple little points here and there things that stuck with me and I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. I guess I don't want to spoil anything for anybody who might play the game. I don't see any reason to um, do that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so from that point of view, I, I I had a lot of times when I was playing this game and I, I told you this, Phil, the other day on uh, when we were talking online, I, I, I had a lot of moments where some of the boss encounters and the set pieces that would happen, I just like 
audibly would say, sitting here in my house by myself, I'd just be like, wow, this game is insane. You know, like, yeah. the stuff that would have, like, the, uh, I, I really enjoyed basically every boss encounter I thought was really cool. I mean, especially, and towards the end, um, the f- one of the final encounters for one of the characters is you're basically just going through this maze that's oh, turning. Oh, the maze. Up. The maze is awesome. Oh, was- yeah. Well, I've, I, I haven't played a ton of these games, but I, I haven't really ever encountered anything like that. Um, I never felt like the game was cheap in any way. I mean, there was a couple times, like the part when, the one part where the level starts and you're in a train tunnel. Yeah. Uh, yes. I died times on that until I figured out what I had to do, and I was just kind of like, um, but I, I didn't use the slowdown mechanic a lot either. The only time I really used it was on stuff like there was the one part where you're going through the caves and there's lava shooting diagonally different directions and you have to kind of just be very patient and navigate. So I would use it there a couple times. I cheated and, and on the, the turning maze at the end, I used it a bit. There uh, were two main segments where I actually had to use the uh, the time slowdown a lot and that's if you play the tutorial level over again, play it on expert because you actually have to uh, uh, it, it asks you which tutorial you want to go through. And uh, choose the expert pilot option. You will have to use the slowdown option, I guarantee you. The second one is the uh, trash compactor thing, where you have to go along with the trash, and I had yeah. to yeah. Oh, I yeah. constantly had mm-hmm. to use it there. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't quite understand what I did wrong the first time I flew yeah. through that. I was like, I was with the garbage, and I'm not seeing any other visual cue that I need to go with. I guess it wasn't with the garbage enough, and second time through, I got it, got it okay. <laughs> I, you know, I also had the same reaction when I played it and I saw the animals and I was just kind of like, huh. I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, that kind of game, you know. All right. I think they were pretty awesome. Though. I liked them. I thought, like, they were cool looking. Yeah, and yeah. I don't have to sound like it's a bad thing. I just wasn't expecting it. And then, and I thought that mixed with the Hungarian and just kind of like this weird story of and jumping between timelines. It wasn't, I, I got enough out of it where I felt like I enjoyed it, but it, I, you know, I even looked up after I finished the game. I'm like, okay, I I did kind of like the, like the Donnie Darko thing. I like looked it up. I'm like, what the hell did I just play? Like, what? <laughs> 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 well, it really doesn't help that plot wise, the timeline is harder to follow than freaking Terminator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> but uh, and I couldn't really find any good summaries of the story. To be honest with you, I I, I went around and I, I was just googling everything. Uh, you know, <laughs> But, but but that's funny because when you Google this game, a ton of stuff comes up. Everybody has played it. Everybody loves this game. You know, it's just funny that there's no fan pages that have spelled that out for it yet. I wanted I just wanted like five paragraphs explaining like what, so I could just read it and be like, okay, that's what the story was about. And that's what was coming out of Donnie Darko's chest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you mean, dude. I was doing I was doing the exact same thing, and I. Oh, uh, uh, and I couldn't find anything about it, but. Eh, whatever you know, I, I I thought the environments were amazing. I thought the yeah. graphics were amazing. Um, I especially some of the environmental transitions. I mean, I got a perfect clip up uh, when I actually covered the game. Of there is this one place where you go through this tunnel and it's underwater, and then you go back to that same place and it's all drained of water and there's fire everywhere. And I actually managed to transition the screen well enough so you went through the same point at the same time with the two different ships and it was right. just a perfect transition and it looked beautiful it's just how well they managed to change the the entire look and feel of the level just on the basis of that different color palette uh, the fact that there's no water there anymore gorgeous yeah yeah and, and all the one of my favorite parts was the robot factory going through that and uh, and yeah. the, all uh, the arms and stuff twisting and like putting the robots together in the background and I'm like watching them put the, them together and I'm like oh god I'm gonna have to fight one of those like I would it doesn't happen <laughs> kind of like just waiting for one of them to like jump off and and attack me or something and you uh, do fight that one in the city it's not one of those ones but you do fight that big robot thing in the city which is kind of cool yeah yeah that was that that son of a bitch I didn't realize what was happening where his thing would close over and then if you attacked it would bounce yeah. the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was killing me for the longest time, and uh, I, I that I think I might have actually gotten a game over screen on him, um, and then I uh, eventually I wised up and figured out what was going on. I'm like, oh, all right, I'm an idiot. Yeah. But the boss, the boss in the robot factory can go to hell. Uh, which one was that? I'm trying to remember what the, it was. The, the construction line. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I like the parts where like you'd have the control rooms and you'd see the two the two guys up there and they'd be like working on everything. And you'd have to blow up the control room to kind of shut down that section in advance. I thought yeah. that was neat. Um, oh, it was cool. Don't get me wrong. It was just a pain oh. in my ass. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, I, I don't. I, I really like this game a lot. I, I I'm just happy. I'm at this weird point right now in gaming and the way I feel about things, and and uh, I'm 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 like almost close to hanging up my hat. And uh, then when I when <laughs> you I play- can't be the host of Game Club and say that. Well, no, I mean like when I. <laughs> Talking about, I'm not talking about the games we play on here because they're usually kind of like, you know, smaller titles and stuff like that. But I'm talking about like overall AAA gaming. I'm kind of like, you, you know. mean the stuff like SimCity not launching properly is the kind of thing that makes you just want to hang up your hat entirely of the whole mainstream gaming scene. Uh, kind of of all that stuff, and I'm just you know. But anyway, that aside, when I play a game like this, it kind of like renews my hope. And kind of renews my faith that as long as games like this keep coming out uh, on various platforms, and as long as I always have a PC to play games on, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, Wait till we play next week's game; you are gonna love it. Or two I, weeks from now, I'm, I'm cheating on on the next game because I have already played through quite a bit of it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that that's generally how I feel about the indie scene and the budget title scene in its entirety. I mean, I constantly get pissed off at the major AAA titles nowadays, but the smaller games I always seem to have fun with and I always go back to. Yeah, awesome. that's exactly what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I got this game for five bucks on Amazon and I just put the code in Steam and uh, $5. You got, and you got to play it. I got to play. I did get to play it. That was amazing. I, <laughs> it. Yeah, I got it for free from Gamersgate, actually. So nice, nice, sweet. Um, you know, there's there really isn't that much that I I can say negative about the game. I do think that there's a lot positive to be said about it. Graphically, it looks awesome. I think it controls perfectly. I think anybody can pick it up and play it like instantly. Um, I think that the only negative thing that I can say about it is, one, you've got to be in the mood to play it. Like, you're not always in the mood to play a shoot 'em up and I don't think I was really in the mood to play a shoot 'em up in these past couple of weeks. Um, I think I'm always in the mood for that. Y- are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in the mood to shoot ships. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but I, I have to be in the mood to shoot ships, and when I'm in the mood, I really, really need to, to satisfy it. I just wasn't really in the mood to play a shoot 'em up But, um... Um... The, the, really, the only thing about it that kind of just irked me was... It was tough to tell what was in the foreground versus the background versus yes. in your in your line of fire. And I thought to myself, this has always been a, an issue with with shooters. You know, kind of tossing back to 1942 and 1943, you'd try to shoot at ships, but in reality they'd be too high for you or they'd be too low and you couldn't hit them until they like did a barrel roll into your point of view. So it's a classic problem, but for some reason when it's put into such a beautifully rendered environment like this one it was harder for me to determine what was w- within range and what was no, not within i agree range. there was certain things where like maybe like i ran into the ground by accident not thinking i would hit the ground or something you right. know I, I had similar oh, issues yeah it's also a big part of the whole two and a half d graphic right. style right you know I, yeah. I think i can shoot this guy no wait he's just slightly off to the side yeah. Right. Whereas in like, whereas in you know a classic two D like pixel art one, it's a lot easier to make out what you can touch and what you can't touch. Right. Right. I mean, essentially, if I if I wasn't sure if I could touch something, I would usually shoot it, and if the bullets deflected, then I knew I couldn't go there. But it was just, I I know what you're saying. Yeah, and and it's since like most of these targets, you have to sh- hit them multiple times. It's tough to tell if your target is getting shot the first time or not until you actually see the little health bar appear below it. But aside from that, I really did enjoy it. I found a lot of nice little things that I was looking for as I was playing. The Mostly the silhouette guys. I don't know if you guys have noticed those, but uh, there's a point where if you're flying by one of the islands, there's a little silhouette guy fishing. Yeah. And uh, there was another little silhouette guy that was getting blown away, and he's, like, holding onto the ground as he's, like, getting blown kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, into the distance. So I, I, I was always looking for the little that. silhouette guys in the game. Yeah. Yeah. There was uh, little things like that all throughout that I thought were really funny. Like when you fought, uh, what was, was his name? Leon, the big cannon. And Me? then when you when you defeat him at the end, as you're flying off, you see a, down at the bottom, a little door opens up and someone's waving a white flag. Oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> That's awesome. That I saw. Yeah, little things like that, just a little touch. And, and this game uh, kind of 
captures what I was talking about when we talked about Shinobi a couple weeks back of that kind of ridiculousness mm -hmm. that you don't really see as much anymore in games that I kind of enjoy. And, and mm -hmm. uh, this game has that without being too ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like it's not over the completely over the top and, and not just like slapsticky, but it has little touches of, of, of just weird things that, uh, uh, like the, uh, like the, what was it? There was like a shark, the one part towards the end when you're flying over that city and there's all like parties and festivals going on and there's that big ridiculous airship that's all like a, looks like a pinata. And yeah. then you see like, you see like a shark balloon flying over the city <laughs> and just like, and then there's like a dance club and you see the silhouette people dancing outside of it and stuff and just, you know. I, I like little stuff like that. I like those little details that you kind of catch as like bullets are flying by, and you're like, "Oh, look at that!" And then you then you right. die. Because <laughs> you, <yeah. laughs> it, well, yeah. certainly it certainly helps make things feel more alive when you see stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? I I like I said before, I love the art style, and I I would pay I would pay anything to to play a flight game where you I would play a Star Fox game or or even a, a you know a full open so you're game. saying you would like you would like this kind you would like this universe in more of like a free flying yeah. shooting space this, shooter this universe is awesome i think this universe is fantastic and and i think that's kind of why i was a little bit sad that i wasn't that into the story when i was playing it because i was instantly my mind went to it's a shooter i don't want to hear a story i just want to blow stuff up um but the game also reminded me of a, another game that i reviewed a couple of years ago called who's that flying and who's that flying is a lot is much much simpler than this. You're you're a little superhero and you shoot down um, aliens that are that are invading you know cities across the globe. And it like this, you're you're up against a time limit or you're up against it's it's not a health bar, it's a time bar and how quickly you can kill everything. It's premise wise is the same. Who's that flying is a lot simpler than this one, mm -hmm. but it's also it feels more arcadey. There's something more comic and fun about it. Um, whereas this is serious in almost every every sense of the word it's serious in the story the bullets coming at you are absolutely crazy and and it's a it's a very maturely presented shooter so i don't know that's it did any of that shit that i just said make sense i felt like i was rambling a little bit <laughs> no it did <laughs> it's the yeast juice talking it is wait wait somebody <laughs> gave me a better name for it i said i was gonna reuse it it's too late it's yeast juice dude it's yeast juice but um yeah, if, if if I were to do a review of it, I would uh, I would give it a worth uh, I'd give it a worth buying because what's the full price on it? Ten bucks. Ten bucks full price. Yeah, and you can probably nab it for half or thirty yeah. percent of that price. Pretty much, you'll if if you look at any of the major retailers, you'll probably find it on sale somewhere. So I'd give it a I'd give it a worth buying. Mm. And there's demos on all the platforms also, so there's no reason not to give the demo. I now I, I have heard. Well, we'll get to that in a moment with community thoughts, but I've also read uh, other places, some people talking about the demo who had kind of negative opinions about it, and it seemed like the things in the demo that bothered them are not issues in the full game. It sounded like they were just kind of thrown into something, and it was... Um, but that's unfortunate. I didn't play the demo, so I can't speak for myself, but uh, that, that's what I read. I felt no regret picking up the copy. I have been touched them up. What was that? I think I'm getting a little. Uh, I think I'm getting a little call issues here. You guys can hear me fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You sound yeah. good. Yeah, I think uh, for like a split second. Yeah, right, no, I've, be... been, I've been I've been in and out a little bit too. Right. Um. Yeah. I mean, well, I only bought it for like two bucks or whatever. But yeah, I mean, it was it was worth the buy. I mean, I know I sound like I was coming down on it, but I mean, I certainly enjoyed my time with it. I mean, after I finished it, I went and I started playing arcade mode for a while, even though I didn't make it far. Um. I started playing that, and I started fooling around with all the just looking through the menus and whatnot. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess I sound like I was down on it, but and I think it's a good game. I think it's it's good. Two bucks, dude. You spent eight quarters on it, and if this was on an art, a modern oh, oh, I know. If yeah, this was I on a modern cab, like this would be fifty cents easy. Yeah. All right. Well, but if you want as... a uh, if, yeah. if you want a full price list, we have a uh, nine ninety nine uh, US. We have. Seven ninety nine pounds. We have nine ninety nine euros, and uh, nine ninety nine Aussie dollars. So there you go. Yeah. So it's it's it's. I think it's priced well. Um, and I, I just think compared to like a couple of the other shooters we played on Game Club, like uh, you know Ikaruga and Jamestown, I don't think I liked this one as much as those. But I still liked it. I like this one better than Ikaruga. 
Yeah, you're not. I know you weren't big <laughs> on that. I know you weren't big on that. And I was actually going to bring that up. Ikaruga was the first game club I think we brought to YouTube, and people were hating it because here I was not loving a classic. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I might as well have come out and been like, I hate Mario so much. He's the worst <laughs> video game character of all time. <laughs> um, it's probably it was probably the 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 wrong video to come come forward on on uh, oh, YouTube it's, with. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Oh well. Well, uh, guess what, guys? I got some good news. Community feedbacks. We got community feedback. Oh. This one came via email from Tom, and he writes, Hey, guys. I only got to play the demo of Sinemora. I see I almost mispronounced it. You know what? But right here, I'm wishing that you could do an awesome, awesome Casey Kasem voice. <laughs> hey, hey, guys. guys. <laughs> I only got to play the demo of Sinemora, but I really enjoyed what I played. I like the 2.5D style, with things going on in the background, but nothing too distracting. At least, in the demo level, there wasn't. Also, I like the... I'm going to stop doing that now. It's horrible. <laughs> also, <laughs> also, I like the bullet time mechanic, as it certainly was helpful at some points. I tried the game with both mouse and Xbox 360 controller. Oh. It seemed comfortable on both, so I think it would be more personal preference as to what you use for this game. No mouse. No mouse, man. 360 controller. <laughs> No mouse. You're doing it wrong, man. I didn't try it that way, so I can't. I can't say. But <laughs> I didn't either. But come on. The, you need the, the analog <laughs> control is too perfect for it. You need the you need a controller. And I think that or goes for joystick. most bullet hells, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. or a sweet joystick. Yeah. A speed joystick? No, a sweet. Oh, joystick. a sweet. I thought you said a speed. Like, jo I was like, what's a speed joystick? Something more like a Samwa stick and buttons or something, you know? Like, <laughs> it was like a speed joystick. Is this something that arcade cabinet owners only know about? Sub some <laughs> subculture thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you maim guys. Yeah. What are you? What are you trying to say? <laughs> trying to say here? I'm right? saying that I'm insanely jealous that you have a maim cabinet, and I think it comes up in like every single episode that we have. It's not a maim cabinet. It's a real cabinet. I, well, I'm sorry. I'm I'm jealous you have a real cab. <laughs> So um, before we uh, lose lose that thought, I'd just like to thank Tom very much for sending in that uh, community feedback. And if you guys want to send your community feedback for the next game that we're going to play, uh, which is Mark of the Ninja, you can send it to Club at gmail.com. Mark of the go Ninja, to, good game. Yes. Yes, indeed. You're, you're approving? You're approving of Mark of the Ninja? Randy is already approving oh, of Mark Oh, cannot wait. Ninjas are the best! We played Shinobi uh, on the last episode, and in the YouTube comments, we got a lot of people saying, "Why don't you guys play Mark of the Ninja?" And, and then it was like it was like heaven raining mana down upon us. Mark of the Ninja went on sale like the next day on mm -hmm. on uh, Steam, so it was pretty. It was pretty wow. nice. So that will be our next game. I look forward to it because I played uh, I played Shank and I thought that was a pile of shit. And these guys made Shank and these guys did Shank, right? Yes. Yeah. This is the same guys. I'm just curious. Just curious. That's all. It is. See it's the turn. same guys. I, I, I will honestly, I will be super surprised if you find Mark of the Ninja to be a pile of shit. I'm sure it's not a pile of shit, but I just think Shank is, and I, I find it hilarious that I own both of them somehow. I guess <laughs> through, like through bundles. I hate this or, game. Or, 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 I'm buying it full one. price. Oh. Yeah, I, I think it came with like the two indie bundles in the last two. Years or you know, I'm I'm worried now that he said that you guys might find him shanked before the next. Uh, <laughs> so, that game is very well beloved by a lot of people. Shank, I still haven't tried Shank yet. Shank. Shank. I know, I know, people like it, and it's like, it's just not. It's not good. <laughs> I know that's. I know it's terrible to make it that simple, but I get like quick thoughts on it. It's like, um, you know, it kind of has um. Like the 3D brawler set up in like a 2D world. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to conjure some quick thoughts here, um, and I feel like that combat is just not. Wor it doesn't really work that well in in that space because those games are kind of like you know God of War and stuff. Those combat games are kind of about like crowd control and using that you know your arena as you know. As your your space to move around in and 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 f I sound like such an idiot right now. And but words and things and words and things. But I feel like in Shank, it's literally I'm just sitting there mashing the goddamn button and you know there the is, there is looking. Like, yeah, I think the word you're looking for is spectacle fighter. No, not even so much. That, I guess so, but I just feel like it doesn't. 
as I'm sitting here thinking about it, though, and I'm sitting here saying it, Muramasa is kind of a, a similar style game, and I really like Muramasa. So, I, I, there's just some... Shank is just boring. There, how about that? It's boring. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't sugarcoat it or anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Please. Don't hold back, Phil. Don't hold back. F it. This is not about Shank, so I don't, I don't need to... <laughs> but, yeah, I'm curious about um, um, Mark here, the Ninja. Cool. Because it looks cool. I think it looks cool. I thought Shank looked cool, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm holding You're... back a ton of comments because there's I, a lot I would... of asterisks on like every like statement here. It's like <laughs> I need to put an animated asterisk over Phil's head Blink! and then put a I... note below the video. I'm definitely going to have to catch the next episode and just watch him shit all over the game. <laughs> if I, might like, I might the really like it. <laughs> if I shit on it, bring the, bring it, bring man. the pain, man. Bring I the will... pain. I want <laughs> it. I want the pain. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I will more, furiously please? type in those comments. <laughs> any more? Uh, any more community feedback? That was it. That's all we got on this one. But Thanks, uh, Tom. Thank you that's, for that's, that. That's that's one more than last time. So that's <laughs> that's excellent. I know a lot of people were very excited about Mark of the Ninja. So please, guys, throw out your comments for Mark of the Ninja. I even had people talking about it on the last Elder Speak that I was uh, that I did. So let's hear it. You know. And you know what? I I I I do kind of blame myself a little bit also because what I should be doing is. Prior to the episode, I should be putting stuff out on Twitter more and Facebook. So if you aren't already, you should be following ElderGeek.com on Facebook and Twitter and Google+. Plus. We're even on there now. If you're one of those people, like, you know, Blank. myself. Myself included, but, you know, there's, there's not many of us. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, find us on there. You can find us on iTunes, Zoom, Stitcher Radio, and, of course, you your may be watching us right now on youtube and if that's the case you should go ahead and hit the subscribe button maybe give us a like and uh, leave us a review on the itunes store would that would be really helpful and we always appreciate all of those that we get and if you do do that do do that uh go ahead and shoot us an email and just let us know that you left one because to be honest with you i don't check it all the time and and i when people leave comments uh i like to read them on the show and just you know give shout outs to people who help us out uh so just let us know and I'll be sure to do that. Uh, Lyot, you want to uh, go ahead and just plug plug your uh, your page and let people know how they can get in touch with you? All right. Well, uh, my channel is pretty simple. It's uh, you know YouTube slash uh, slash the Cyan Firefly, and you can go there and catch up the latest gaming news and a lot of Neverwinter content. I've been doing a whole lot of Neverwinter. It's, for right. some reason, people just seem to love that game. <laughs> Because Dungeons and Dragons is awesome. That's why. Beloved, beloved franchise, and yeah. we'll definitely have links to all, all uh, to your channel as well in the show notes. So uh, anybody who's listening, uh, maybe through iTunes or you know another another way other than the YouTube channel, head over to eldergeek.com and, and look for the post about this episode and go check out Lyot's channel. Definitely do that. Yes. So uh, I think. We have covered uh, the goddamn hell out of this game, and I think it might be time to wrap up this episode of the Game Club. Uh, we will be back in two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, talking about Mark of the Ninja. One of Randy's favorite games of 2012. <laughs> awesome. 20 everything. 20 of Randy's <laughs> favorite game. 20 everything. One of fav Randy's <laughs> favorite games of ever. No, it's really good. I, I do enjoy the hell out of this game. It has awesome art. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> and I'll I say definitely this. need to go back and finish it. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this before before we actually get into next week's show. I I was kind of I was a little dubious of it before before I played it, but I didn't think that anybody could do two dimensional stealth this well, and it they did it awesome. So that's cool. it. All right, get us out of here, Steve. All right, thank Punch you, it, Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, every. <laughs> Listening and watching, and Lyot, thank you again for joining us. For myself, Steve, and Phil, and Randy, we will see you next time. Goodbye. See you, everybody. Farewell. <laughs>